I don't know how well it's going to work, but my local steel place did have a piece of stainless in the cutoffs section. So that's bigger by quite a bit from the <laughs> hammerhead I'm trying to make. It does file, so it's not too hard to use a file on, which is good. So I think that will be all right. It's bigger than this, so I'm going to just see if my carbide teeth metal blade on my sawzall will cut down through there. I did leave a bit of extra. If, if the saw cut sucks, I have a chance to actually still have enough to make something this wide. Oh, stainless steel, let me count the ways how I hate you. The biggest one is the work hardening, which kept running into. Well, that didn't work at all. I would have thought that this, oh, it does say stainless. That does say stainless steel on, but all this did was get hot. It worked for a little bit for the carbide one, but then it quit working. Just, I don't think it's gonna work, but I'll try this bimetal blade. That cut for a short, very short period of time, and then that got hot. And then I just went back to the manual hacksaw with a new blade and that worked. It's not the way I wanted to do it, but boy, that's still hot. That was a few minutes ago and that's still too hot to pick up. It's not a very straight cut. Yeah, you can kind of see it even got it dark. I'm suspect, like from here down was all manual hacksaw. From there up, off and on was the other blades, but that really didn't cut very well. I don't know if that was too fast or what, because I know that if you cut too fast with steel and such, it doesn't do as good. You have to do the, the appropriate speeds. So here I'm doing the lathe on the stainless steel. And initially I ran into some problems when trying to face off that first side because it was the really tilted side. So I was having very much an interrupted cut and that ended up breaking off the cor corner of the insert and I had to switch it around at some point there. Um, I, did I remember get to that point? Yeah, I may have already done that. Nope, there it was, I switched it around. It cut much better when the insert had a whole point. <laughs> Uh, that part of that, I think, was the work hardening. I wasn't taking enough of a cut. Same thing I ran into with the actual cutting it off. And, yeah. Stainless steel is not a fun thing. You can see the really tiny chips that come off. But then I worked on the other side. And this time I tried it first with the cutoff blade. And if I would have kept going, I would have been okay. But I stopped and started, and it work hardened. And then I went back to the thing and got it all finished up. And that worked. More learning has occurred. This is the piece of round bar that I got that's stainless steel. I initially started out with two problems. One, it was a very rough interrupted cut. And two, I had the speed way too fast. I did look online and did see you're supposed to slow it a third or so of aluminum. So I thought I had gotten that, but it was not slow enough with this little lathe and these little tools. I managed to ding and break one of my corners on my cutter. Good news is it's a replaceable carbide cutter. So I was able to just rotate it and keep going. The first one definitely broke off. The second one has a little bit of wear, but it's still doing okay. Made a nice surface. Corners are rounded off. That part worked okay. So here I'm using the center drill to get the hole in and then I moved it to the... Well, that went interesting. Not in a bad way, but just interesting. So a while back, I got these Aggressor Blue Mall for heavy duty drilling in stainless steel and other hard materials. Runs cooler, lasts longer in the toughest materials. And there was a quarter inch bit. That's the same one I tried in the lathe that just, it started and then that was it. It did not go anywhere. So I put it in the, drill, the blue drill press, because that's the one that has the cross slide vise on. Got it centered up on what seemed to be the hole, drilled, and then the one thing that I did uh, read online, because I did try and research this first, was that you want to drill and always be making a chip because stainless steel will work harden. And I think that's the problem I was having on the lathe, and that may also have been why I broke the bit, the carbide bit, and why I may have dinged a little bit of my cutoff blade that I tried doing the second cutoff thing. I may have not been making enough chips one of the times and it worked hardened because when you push harder then it would cut better but then if I went too slow it seemed to not cut again. So I think that might have been part of my problem over there. But again, first time doing this with stainless steel so it's learning. So the way I have this set up since I don't have a proper, you know, milling setup is I did have this little milling plate from the lathe that has the slot in it so that you can put round things in and get it locked in. So that was good. And then I tried using this thing, little square, and under the assumption that the jaw, assuming that that was straight, I lined this up with the thick section, assuming that is straight, and this part was straight up and down based on the, that. I also put it, or tried to center this on the actual post 
that tightens this so there's less angular play. Then I just put the drill bit in and I was noticing that I had to kind of pull and keep going otherwise it would stop but if I pulled and kept going it kept going so it went through faster than I would have expected so that part's good. The bad part is I need that as a metric thread and I don't have a close enough metric drill bit. I'm hoping that this is centered in the hole and I'm hoping it's centered on the other side. I'm not going to take it out of here or move anything because then if I get the other drill bit, then I could theoretically drill down through that same hole without playing around. So now that I have the proper metric drill bit, I'm going to enlarge the hole from the quarter inch to the proper size and just went down through in one motion. So hopefully that didn't work hard in it too much, but I don't know. And now I start with the tap that came with the drill bit and I got in like a couple threads and wasn't really going in good, so I figured, I'd say, all right, I'll try it, try it, and it broke off. That's really annoying. And then I tried to use a vice grips to pull it out, and as soon as I tightened it, that shattered off too. Fun! Uh, that's not how you were supposed to tap a hole. Since I did not have the right drill bit, I bought this set off of Amazon. I don't recommend it, or I should say drill bit worked because I had the hole mostly the right size. But as for the tap, yeah, I don't recommend that. I wasn't even pushing or turning that hard and this broke. And then I made the mistake of trying to use a pair of vice grips, as you saw, to clamp on there and, you know, it clamped on and then it shattered again. So that was definitely set too hard. And yeah, that's a bunch of crap. That's not how stuff's supposed to work. I have another set that I can't use because there's now a piece stuck in there. So we'll see if I manage to get that out. So I got a little screwdriver and was able to gently tap it and rotate it around till the little piece came up out. It was not very big, but boy, that I'm so glad that came out. And then I tried one of the taps from the other set that I got before and that one worked fine. The big thing was just getting the chips out, and there were some hard spots, so that was kind of annoying. Uh, work hardening, again, stainless steel is not a fun thing to play with. I don't know that if I, w if I knew what I knew now, would I do it again? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It was that annoying. I did finally get it to work, though, so I don't have to do it again. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. But it should be fine. But... Here, it's just, it's a lot of work, especially with that tap handle. It just does not work very well. Well, that's progress. Even though the first one, the Drill America, failed. The POUMX8 by 125. That tap was too hard and failed. The tap set I got the other day, this DWTS8 by 1.25 three flute tap set those worked good i used the same basic one as this was which means it has the slants at the top so that it's good for starting the holes and then i used after it was down in a ways i used the bottoming tap to clear it out far enough and i managed to get not only the new aluminum one that I did that looks like it's pretty well seated the whole way around, but because the threads on this centerpiece are much tighter, the brass one that broke on the other one screws in, which means the aluminum one also works. So the problem with this thing, they had the hole too big and there wasn't enough meat on the threads to come out the whole way to actually engage. So now I get to drill a hole down in the center to try and hold a handle. So what I have to figure out, since these are my choices, threaded rod, which is probably not ideal, or this straight rod, which might work. But that's about as big around as the other handle. I think a handle like that would work. That should be big enough to go in the center. All right, so now I'm t I have the piece of half inch bar. So I figured, all right, I have a half inch by 13. So we'll do the tap or do the die and then the tap and that was hurting my hand because it was not going in. It just kept getting stuck on hard bits. And so I bought a new wrench and oh my gosh, that was so much better. I could do fractional things without it hurting my hand. I'm so glad I got the new wrench. Then I was able to finish tapping that the whole way down for the half inch 13 hole for the shaft. So that's good. I much prefer that tap wrench. I've never liked this kind. This is the kind that came with all my cheap sets from Home Depot for the taps and such. And I've never liked these because it's always a pain in the butt to get the tap to sit and not just fall out and actually tighten down. And 
if there's any kind of tightness that much, it hurts your hand for tightening. And I definitely ran into that when I was using this half inch 13 tap. I am reaffirming that I don't like stainless steel. I will probably avoid using that in the future, but at least now I know for sure I don't like stainless steel. The only reason I did it was that's what this hammerhead was, and I figured, well, I'll try and duplicate that piece, but yeah, stainless steel sucks. I understand now why all the people online say stainless steel is a pain in the butt to work with. Instead of this kind, I always see the people who do real machining, like Keith Rucker and Curtis from Cutting Edge Engineering, and those guys use this kind of a uh, tap wrench, and I like that much better. So I got two of those size. It's one of these, the Abelman number three is what this one is, and it all, that came with a set that has this smaller number zero that should work for some of the smaller stuff. The biggest problem I'm having with the stainless steel is it work hardens, and with either one of the drillings that I did, it work hardens in different spots. So with this half inch tap, half the thing it would be fine and then it would get into a spot where I could just barely move it and had to go back barely move it had to go back barely move it had to go back and once I got past the hard spot it would go easily a ways and then back for breaking the chips and such so I got the whole way down through this top part into the hole where the other hole comes through so that should be plenty deep enough this new handle was letting me hold on enough that when it got super tight in the hard spots I could turn past it so at this point, let me clean it all up a little bit and see what it looks like. All right, it is run through some brake clean and some air to get all the chips out. And I did actually have a half inch 13 bolt because I'm not, uh, well, I know now, but I was not sure if the fact that this was in there crooked or if maybe because it was so hard to put this in here and I was using the really pain in the butt wrench, that was crooked. So if I hold the phone straight, and you can kind of see this short bolt also wobbles depending on the rotation back and forth. So I think the problem is that the hole, for whatever reason, probably because of how it was getting hit on the hard spots, the hole has a slight issue. That's why that rotates wildly around an axis. So once I figured out I had a nut, I put the nut on it as a jam nut, that worked and then put the handles on, then cut the handle to length, and filed it off. Well, it's my first hammer that I made pretty much from parts. I cut it basically the same length as this one, and I may still add a handle on it, or I may just use it like this. It's not it's not too bad like this, but we'll see. It is night and day different uh, weight-wise. So this is a lot heavier hammer than the original. I don't know if this is a... This has a hollow sound. This may just be a tube. Not a solid handle like I thought. That's a solid handle. And I decided since I did have a half inch nut that I'd use it as a jam nut to help hold that on instead. So I didn't put any Loctite in the head. I just have this jammed up tight and I'm pretty sure that'll work fine. The one thing I did just notice while playing around with it is these heads when, oh, hold on a second. Is these heads when you tap against it tend to move I should say they tend to loosen up and rotate and that I'm sure if that was the problem on the original hammer which I don't think it completely was because this just wasn't right as I did to testing before but I may have to do either use wrenches to tighten this or make some little flats to make it easy to just use a wrench gently to tighten these I'm happy that the brass one actually still locks into this though whereas it just slides in and out on the others. So I know that part of the problem with this is the holes were too big. They didn't leave enough threads. I like the fact that I was able to make my own hammer. Even if it's an industrial weight, like twice the weight or more of that other one, it still counts as a brass hammer and aluminum hammer. I think the reason that these heads are, the original metal heads were rounded is that way you have an easier time to, you know, even if you're slightly off angle, you still have a square single hit. Whereas if you're this way, you don't hit on the head, you hit on the corner. So you're not hitting in the center. So I may still take this and put it on the lathe and just add a little bit of a chamfer angle on there. Kind of like that one. It doesn't need much, just the slightest hint. Or maybe I'll leave it well, until I run into a problem where I need it. Since the whole reason I needed a brass hammer was as a brooch for that pulley that I've already finished. It was an interesting project and I learned a lot. Would I do it again? I don't know. It, <laughs> in tools and things, it definitely cost me more than the original hammer. The stainless steel chunk that I got itself was like 30 some dollars. 
Not to mention, you know, well, this this rod was built into that same price because I got it at the same time. So it's definitely unique. Nobody else has one like this. And especially if I manage to do a nice handle on it at some point, I don't know if I'm going to bother. But if I do, then it's definitely going to be nobody else is going to have. But that's cool. I am very happy with that. And just a quick last bit. One of the people who I showed the pictures to said, how's the balance? Well, I didn't even think about that. But as it turns out, it ended up being pretty much equivalent to the original, at least with the plastic heads. Now granted, the brass head causes that side to pull down because it's slightly heavier than the aluminum, but that's still pretty much lined up, I mean dead on, and there's a wooden handle ball peen, 8 ounce ball peen for comparison. So that's very similar to there. So that's a happy accident.